Malayan spits water into Marina Bay. Tourists enthralled take photos. The air thick with humidity and the backdrop, a modern architecture of a bustling metropolis. Singapore, you feel alive and well, gentrified and curated to within the millimetre. There's Singaporeans working hard in office blocks and taking lunch at hawkers centres and keeping fit in their spare time. There's cultural districts, Little India, Arab Street, Chinatown and Orchard Road as the main shopping precinct. It really is a city unique unto itself. It's a city and it's a country and it's popular. But let's give it the city critic once over nonetheless. Does Singapore live up to its reputation? What numbers does it pull? I'm here to find out. Cars are taxed hard here. We're talking 68 to 95k for a certificate of entitlement. Cars are discouraged in favour of cheap public transport, walking and cycling. Still, there's plenty of cars about, but rules are followed strictly. Crosswalks are actually places a pedestrian can safely cross a road. City building has been crafted with the pedestrian front and centre. There's footpaths everywhere, plenty of shade, foot-friendly destinations like Gardens by the Bay, Boat Quay and Marina Bay, just to name a few. At night time, joggers come out and they are well catered for. It would be the perfect city to explore by foot, if it wasn't so damn humid. Mornings and evenings are divine, at least in July. Bring your walking shoes and explore the curated landscapes and the city engineered to precision. Walking in Singapore is a joy, and the best areas to walk are Chinatown, Downtown, Marina Bay, and both sides of Singapore River. It's world class for walkers. Going further afield, the shine wears off a touch. Walking, four stars. I don't know if the buses are any good here. I bet they are. I just haven't used them because the MRT is too complete, too efficient. A buck for a short ride and trains run every five minutes and the system gets you just about anywhere you could want to go. MRT connects to Changi Airport and they don't try to fleece you with an airport charge. Some stations like Tanjong Pajar are whole multi-level shopping malls below ground. It's a little hidden city below the surface. Be sure to take the time to choose an exit that suits your destination or you could find yourself hundreds of metres further away than you need to be. Harbour Front is a station that connects to sea routes such as Batam and is conveniently connected to both northeast and circle lines. The harbour has an immigration checkpoint for your passport stamp and they check in luggage just like at an airport. For long distance buses north to Malaysia, you'll need to get to Queen Street Tur. It's a short walk from Jalan Basar on the downtown line. Best to book bus trips online, or you can do it at the station with cash only. The Metro EasyLink card or Nets Flashplay card costs about $5 and you can top up at MRT stations and 7-Elevens. Public buses also accept the cards, so it's a fully integrated system. You can also just use your chip and pin credit card. Public transport, four stars. To start with, there are so many great public places here to just hang out. Nice curated city areas give the place a cool vibe as people just hang out with family and friends. Downtown is a chill drinking district as the working day draws to a close. There's small bars for days filled with office workers. Boat Quay is a long dense stretch of heady nightlife. More bars and resto bars than clubs, but some get lively as the evening wears on. There's plenty of quality museums and galleries to explore during the day and also a range of big ticket events like the Formula One and the Air Race. And then there's festivals such as Zook Out and Ultra for fans of EDM and Bay Beats for a more pop and alternative vibe. Oh, there's also It's the Ship, a three day EDM festival on a cruise ship. Now that does sound like fun. Check Time Out magazine for weekly listings of events as there's always something happening in this city. That said, the entertainment can be pricey. The big ticket items will put a dent in your bank account, and if you like a drink, a pint will set you back about $18 at a bar or a club. Now that ain't cheap. Entertainment, four stars. 
if he can afford it. The younger generation here look fit. If they're not in their work clothes, it seems like they're going to or coming from some kind of exercise. There's compression clothes for days. Around the bay you'll find joggers and cyclists. Gym, yoga, pilates places are ubiquitous. Some not cheap at all, such as Virgin Active Clubs, but many are reasonable. I spent my time at Brickhouse Gym, which was quality and affordable. F45, CrossFit, you want it, it's here. Plenty of indoor golf centres and Marina Bay Golf Course if you're cashed up. More football than futsal and heaps of bouldering centres. Enough basketball courts if you prefer the bouncy game, but you might have to jump on the MRT to find a tennis court. Basically, whatever you're into, you can find it here. Recreation, four stars. Singapore is more of an all-inclusive kind of destination. It's a city with enough going on to keep you happy for a good while. Sentosa is the obvious day trip with all kinds of activities squashed into a small island. There's a Universal Studios, water park, aquarium, man-made beaches, and a whole bunch of beach clubs for you to while away the days. Another day trip option is Batam, a one hour ferry ride to the Indonesian island. It's a place Singaporeans go for cheap massage, spa and shopping. But there's also a bit of Indonesian island paradise dotted around the place too. Other options can be found in southern Malaysia, such as the city of Johor, where you can sample Malaysian food culture. Day trips, two stars. Singapore is a confluence of cultures. Chinese, Malay and Indian. Three great food cultures all contributing to the food scene of the city. Hawker's centres are everywhere and crammed with the cultural diversity you'd expect. Southern Indian, Chinese, Malay, it's all local fare in this bustling metropolis. When I think Singaporean, I think chilli crab, chicken rice, bakute, fish head curry and kaya toast. But biryani, banana leaf curry and satay live here too. Hawkers are cheap, restaurants less so, and like any advanced economy, you get international fare in abundance. There's an abundance of quality restaurants here just waiting to be explored. I personally stuck to the hawkers and tried to figure out how they keep the costs so low when everything else is so expensive. Also I must mention Sate Street at Laupasat. I stumbled upon this place late one night on my way home. A better city rater would have found it by doing research. Not this one. I found it by getting lost. To summarise, food in Singapore is awesome. Four stars. So here's the kicker. It's clearly a great city, but it'll cost you, or you're going to have to lower your standards. I did the latter and stayed in a capsule hotel for $40 a night. That would get you a business hotel in Osaka or a decent condominium in Bangkok. And accommodation gets pricey as you move up the star ratings. Expect $200 plus for anything close to four stars. And that's assuming you book in advance. As mentioned before, drinking isn't cheap either. Up to $20 for a normal pint at most bars. Cheaper to have a beer from a hawker's center. If you pick up a can from a convenience store, expect to pay about $4.50. For some reason, you can still eat well for cheap. That's awesome and a real saving grace. Another saving grace is the super cheap public transport. Also, there's plenty of free things to see and do, which can save you money. So I always do Singapore on the cheap. I can afford better, but I just know how much further my money will go in practically any other city within a 3,000 km radius. Value, two stars. A lion spits water into Marina Bay. Tourists enthralled empty their wallets. The air thick with affluence and the backdrop a utopian fantasy where nature meets city. Downtown is the place to stay. The whole downtown area and surrounds is completely gentrified 
completely manicured and spotlessly clean. It's like the soles of your shoes are cleaner after walking in the street here. It's hard to imagine a more perfect example of placemaking. It is, for all intents and purposes, a vision of a utopian future, a looking glass into how great our civilization could be. But damn, where's the Southeast Asian grit? Where's the hedonism? And why are the durians so expensive? Singaporeans must think the rest of the world is dirty and unkempt. To them, this is normal. And in Singaporeans, I found a friendly and positive lot, albeit somewhat reserved. It's a city complete, and a city for now. Singapore, where Southeast Asia meets affluence.